Welcome to The Wave Strength, innovative solutions for a secure retirement, presented by Pacific Life. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Wave Strength podcast series. I'm your host, Jim Breen, and I'm excited to welcome two guests into the studio today. We have Michael Oler and Drew Carrington. Thank you both for, for joining us today. Thank Thanks you for having us. Absolutely. Uh, Mike, you are uh, head of Defined Contribution Lifetime Income Solutions for Pacific Life's Institutional Division. And Drew, you are the head of Institutional Defined Contribution for Franklin Templeton. Uh, again, thanks to the both of you for, for heading on out and being with us live in the studio today. Thank you. Happy to do so. Absolutely. So, uh, Drew, let's start with you. Can you maybe share a little bit about your role at Franklin Templeton with our audience today? Yeah, thanks. And thanks for having us. Uh, my pleasure. So our, my job is to help large employers. So big companies who have retirement plans, design those plans in a way to uh, ensure that their participants achieve retirement success. Perfect. And, and Mike, maybe you can share a little bit about your role with uh, Pacific Life's Institutional Division. Sure, absolutely. I think very similar to what, what Drew's doing. My role is very uh, comparable in the sense that we're trying to help plan sponsors solve for providing lifetime income to their participants. So while Drew's team might be doing it from a plan design or investment perspective, we're trying to tackle it from an insurance perspective. So you bring those two firms together, they're both trying to solve the same problem. Uh, and I think you bring the best of, of both thinkings to the, to the table. And this is great, and our audience could probably uh, hear right away from the descriptions of uh, these two gentlemen, uh, the, the titles of, that these two gentlemen have, in the fact that, you know, a lot of opportunity right now in the industry uh, for, for partnerships as it pertains to, to bringing lifetime income solutions to the table. And so here we have two uh, financial firms with r rich history um, in, in each respect, Pacific Life, Franklin Templeton. Um, let's start with that discussion, okay? The, the need for partnerships and the reason why these two firms came together, Drew? Yeah. So I think part of it is a recognition that we're, we're not going to be able to solve this challenge uh, on our own. We're going to need partnerships. The, the DC ecosystem, the retirement plan ecosystem is complex. There's a lot of players. Um, and if we're going to serve the end participant, if we're going to help plan sponsors serve the end participant, we're going to need partners. Um, we're going to need to find organizations where we have similar views, uh, similar objectives. Um, and that's, I think that's kind of how we found each other. Absolutely. And, you know, Pacific Life, a, a company with a lot of rich history as well. Uh, a lot of similarities, Mike. Yeah, I think uh, part of part of the attractiveness of Frankl T Franklin Templeton as a partner is the fact that there are very uh, strong similarities in terms of our focus on the end investor, our focus on, on problem solving, and our focus on trying to find uh, creative ways to create personalized solutions for individuals. So trying to replicate well-established principles in terms of uh, uh, asset liability management on the insurance side, as well as multi-asset portfolios and investment management from the Franklin Templeton side. Uh, bringing those together, leveraging technology. I think both firms would agree there's a strong investment and commitment to leveraging technology to help bring these solutions to participants uh, and also to help demonstrate to plan sponsors that we are trying to work across the ecosystem and not trying to solve it alone by bringing in technology to help uh, help address this challenge. Yeah, t technology is, is is so crucial. We've talked about that in a, in a couple of podcasts we've done with more folks from the, the Franklin Templeton side. Uh, Drew, did you have a follow up? Well, I, I'd say the commitment is part of that, right? So technology yeah. is part of it, but the commitment to, to to solving the challenge, the the retirement income or decumulation challenges, was really important to us. Um, see, seeing Pacific Life make the kind of commitment to this uh, income uh, challenge was something that was appealing. Um, I think um, as well for us, we know that Pacific Life has a long history of dealing with employers who are, um, who are trying to uh, deliver that lifetime income to uh, their employees, uh, traditionally in the um, pension risk transfer or annuity buyout business. But Look, it's it's the same in many ways. It's the same kind of problem, right? It's an employer-sponsored retirement plan uh, delivering lifetime income to employees. That's that's the problem we're trying to solve. That kind of experience is really is really important and relevant. The other thing I think that's that was a, appealing to us is uh, a focus not just on we're going to develop a product. We're going to have a single, you know, we're going to develop a product and then we're done. Yeah. Um, um, 
this is a this is going to be a multiple solution, an evolving solution uh, kind of environment. Um, we don't know enough yet to know what the right answer is. We know, in fact, what we maybe the one thing we know is there's not going to be one answer, and and that's so important, really, and it lends to the reason why we're sitting here right now. This partnership uh, coming together to discuss opportunities to build these solutions. And Mike, you've mentioned this in, in, in previous podcasts, um, you know, not focusing just on the word product, but focusing on the word solutions, you know, creating that journey uh, that is so important for that customer, that participant. And let's talk about the participant for a moment here. You know, I, I know it's it's easy to easy uh, on the face of this, but let's talk about why this is so important for the, that end user, for the participant. Mike? Well, we think individuals, it, it, we've seen in, in a number of different studies and research that there is a desire for lifetime income in retirement, but they don't always know what that means when you refer to it as an annuity, right? So they obviously have this desire to not run out of income while they're um, during their retirement years. They want to be able to replace that paycheck, but they don't always know how to do that. And so trying to find solutions that are simple and that can be implemented uh, within the DC ecosystem through record-keeping platforms, through middleware technology providers, uh, and, and in partnership with asset managers and insurance companies together, making sure that we can deliver solutions that will be easily implemented and easily understandable for participants. E easily understandable. Drew, uh, you mentioned a little while ago, uh, you, you know, the word retirement income. You share your thoughts on that, that fun story you had. Y yeah, we, we did some focus groups with folks approaching retirement, and uh, the focus groups were about the, the concept of uh, solutions in the retirement income space. And right away, some of the participants were like, um, when you're retired, you don't have income. <laughs> Uh, Which so, makes sense. I mean, for, from their perspective, I can see where they're coming from. Exactly. And, and I think to, to Michael's point, um, you know, part of what we have to do here, um, we have to help participants understand uh, what combination of income do they need. It's not going to always be 100% guaranteed income. It's not always going to be no guaranteed income. It's going to be some combination. That combination is going to vary by participant or household based on several different factors, demographic factors, uh, you know, tenure at that employer. Um, and then uh, the participants' preferences matter, and also their, their need for guaranteed income may change over time. That's, that's the other thing is we, we have a tendency in our industry to sort of assume that there's kind of one model of retirement and people will retire and then they will get income and that income amount will be the same throughout the remainder of their life. And that's just not realistic. Uh, and we need to, our solutions need to reflect that. And, and not only do they need to reflect that, but the other thing is we need to learn uh, over time. Um, so this is a this is still a relatively new phenomenon in the um, in the four hundred one k or defined contribution space, and we are going to learn. We're going to get data, and we're going to learn what people what people do, what they want to do, how to engage them, and our and our solutions will get better over time as we work together in in partnership to to deliver those solutions. And I think to Drew's point about learning over time, I think some of the solutions you're seeing brought to market today. In, uh, w with collaborations between uh, asset management and insurance companies, they are essentially the same version of products that were introduced 10, 15 years ago when lifetime income first started to be brought to the forefront of defined contribution. But what's important to see now is that you've got a number of players working together on this. It's not like anyone is trying to solve it alone. Um, so much like, uh, give me a little runway on this, this analogy here, we talk about oftentimes that uh, there's going to be no silver bullet for a lifetime income solution because of the need for individual preferences. But I also think that from solving the challenge from a provider perspective, there's not going to be a lone ranger either because not one person is going to be able to solve it or one firm is going to be able to solve it uh, alone. So it takes that collective effort. And I think where we are today as an industry is a reflection of what we've learned from the past 
the introduction and, and the proliferation of middleware providers as, as a, a business line, firms that are focused on this, uh, is light years ahead of where it was 10 years ago when uh, some of these solutions were first introduced. So I think there's that recognition that we're going to try and learn and understand what each of the different players in the retirement ecosystem uh, or the DC ecosystem needs in order to deliver on these solutions. And we're going to keep working through to figure out how to deliver it at the same time that we're working on refining solutions that can actually deliver that end outcome to the individuals. I think, and then building on that, I think one thing we've heard pretty consistently from, from plant sponsors, who are the decision makers, as we heard in the earlier podcast, that plant sponsors have to, uh, you know, approve whatever solution uh, um, that you deliver to the participant. Um, plant sponsors have made pretty clear, uh, we have to be able to demonstrate so not just assert, but we have to be able to demonstrate uh, two really critical things. One is we have to demonstrate that we can engage participants in some sort of experience where the participants feel comfortable making a decision. Uh, up. So there's some level of guidance uh, that helps participants through that decision process. We all know that the, um, you know, the, the decision about buying an annuity can be very daunting. And so helping participants walk through that decision, uh, use language that they're comfortable with, use the, the kind of phrasing that they like, um, lifetime income, really good, annuity, not as good. So we want to use the kind of uh, language that, that participants are comfortable with. So that's the first thing is we have to be able to demonstrate um, the, the ability to engage participants. And the second thing is we have to be able to demonstrate that we can actually implement the solution. And that's where this ecosystem and partnership come, in, come into play. It's not enough to just say, wow, look at our really cool product. Yes. This product can do so many things. Um, you actually have to be able to say this solution can be implemented uh, in your plan uh, without undue stress on kind of all of the providers in the plan. Yeah, it's, it's like a testament, really, to the um, resources that Pacific Life and Franklin Templeton have put forward uh, to uh, this important, important subject. Uh, I, I know from a Pacific Life standpoint, um, you know, with this institutional division that was uh, set up almost three years ago, significant resources put into play. I know Franklin Templeton, a lot of resources as well are being put forth because, as you mentioned earlier, Drew, it's not just a one and done. Right. This is this is the long game. Right. We may not have every single solution right now, but we are building. We are working towards that. That's why these partnerships are so important. Yeah, I, I just want to build on uh, Drew's last point Please. about that that client engagement and the implementation. I think that initial engagement is important, but I think the other way that we're thinking about it is the continual engagement. Yeah. So you're getting them. Uh, you're working with them in the beginning to understand why they might want to think about lifetime income and and all the. Um, additional information that might be needed to help create that personalized solution. But as they're going on that journey, things might change. And so- That when, might change. Things th will change. Things will change. <laughs> things will, one thing is certain is change, right? Um, so helping to stay engaged with them as those changes occur to make sure the path that they're on is still that right path and helping to do a little bit of course correction if necessary to make sure that they're going to get to that outcome that they were originally hoping for. Yeah, we, we talk about it in, in the engagement piece. You know, for a long time, the industry has, has really loved this phrase, set it and forget it. But when you talk to people who are close to retirement, they don't actually like that phrase. I don't, I don't want to forget about my retirement account. I want to be engaged in, uh, in my retirement. Now, we may not collectively as, uh, as investment experts, uh, income experts, think that they're making the best decisions, but they want to be engaged in that process. So changing that frame from uh, set it and forget it to we're going to check back with you uh, and check in and make sure that, you know, as things have changed, are you still on the right path? That's really important as well. Well, Drew, that's interesting. You know, you talk about this set it and forget it mentality, uh, which, you know, brings up another important 
subject to talk about, which is personalization. You know, what are we doing to really um, keep the needs of these participants along, you know, in mind throughout that whole journey, Mike? Well, I think this is something that's really unique to each plan sponsor situation, and it, it, it's a, a point that they should be really thinking through as they're making decisions around what to offer to their participants. You have some very large plan sponsors, some national plan sponsors, international plan sponsors that have employees that are of different demographics, different locations, hourly versus salary. So if you try to create these one-size-fits-all solutions for that uh, varying population, you're not going to really solve the needs for everyone. You're going to maybe hit a small subset, but then you're going to miss a large portion of it. So by creating uh, or providing solutions that help to create a little bit more of a personalized outcome that takes into account those personal circumstances in terms of uh, things like how much they've actually been able to save versus how much their income replacement is. Some people are well-funded for retirement. Annuities may not be a solution for them, for, but for those who are not as well-funded, maybe they need something, a, a portion of their portfolio that's going to go to have that secured level of income to really ha help make sure that they don't run out of income in retirement. So it's really important that plan sponsors really have that understanding of how much personalization do they think they need across their, in, entire, uh, across their uh, retiree or their employee population, actually, not just the retirees. Uh, wonderful. Um, and, and if I could, I, I'd like to switch gears a bit, and I'd like to talk about the current regulatory environment. So, Drew, why don't you paint the picture for our, our listeners about uh, the regulations and the current environment that we are in? So th this this topic of retirement income is one that the um, both legislators and regulators have been looking at for a number of years, really almost right, uh, right out of the gate after uh, the passage of the Pension Protection Act of 2006, this was a topic that uh, um, the legislators and regulators were looking at. Um, eventually, after many, many tries, we got the passage of uh, Secure 1.0 in 2019 that really uh, clarified that plan sponsors could incorporate guaranteed income products in, in their plan, and here's the fiduciary process under which to do that. The DOL has uh, put some regulation around that. So we have some clarity there in ways that are really important. Um, and and, and enable the organizations to move forward. Uh, there was, for a long time, there was kind of a, that sounds like the right answer, but I'm not really sure about, um, you know, under what regulatory sort of regime I'm operating under. Give me a little more clarity. Now we have that. One of the things that's going to happen in uh, Secure 2.0 is they're going to move out the required minimum distributions from IRAs and, and 401k plans to 75 we don't know how people are going to react to that. We know that many, um, many participants, many employees, many individuals with significant uh, retirement balances wait until their required minimum distribution age to start making withdrawals. Will that continue to be the case if the RMD age is all the way out at 75? We don't know. And so whatever solution it is that we're trying to design, it's important that we stay close to the actual data. What are participants? What's participant behavior? Can we enable participants to make decisions around that? And one of the ways that, uh, that, that Michael and I have talked about this is this concept of trial annuitization. Yeah, and I think, I think um, that's a, a perfect example of things that we might be looking to try down the road as we're looking to enhance the solution. And we learn from the market. We get some data on feedback. Uh, we get data as feedback to see what's working, what's not working. And I think if you go back and look at things going back to PPA and target date funds, right, that was the big push that allowed plan sponsors to default participants into target date funds. And we know that b through participant behavior and inertia, more often than not, they stay in those investments. So as we're creating solutions where a plan sponsor feels it's appropriate, they might be willing to default participants into the annuity. Now, once they're in there during the accumulation phase, there's no guarantee that they're actually going to turn that switch, if you will, into an income stream when, uh, they, when they're ready to retire. So trial annuitization would allow for defaulting participants into that income stream, but also giving them an opt out. So maybe we give them that income for one or two years with a bit of a liquidity provision that says, you know what, if they choose they don't like this, they can get some of their, their account value back that was used to, to purchase that annuity. But I think the theory in some of the conversations from an industry perspective around trial annuitization is a lot of times people are just not sure how it's going to work or what it's going to be. So if you get them used to that paycheck continuing, 
instead of from their employer, from the insurance provider, they might say, oh, you know what? This isn't such a bad thing. I like this. Let me keep it going. And so through, again, that, that behavior of defaulting and inertia, it may be something that they realize is actually working in their best interest. But from a fiduciary perspective, from the plan sponsor, they know that they're protected because participants can always opt out. And most importantly, connected to all this, it's going to be the communication, the engagement, the education to make sure that the participant is aware of their options. Trial annuitization is one of those examples of how we're going to learn how participants behave, how plan sponsors uh, um, want to offer solutions to their participants, how participants react, um, and we'll we'll collect that uh, that data, and our solutions will get better as a result. And I think that's one of the that may be in many ways the most important point is the recognition that we don't we don't have the answer today. And we, what we're committed to is not finding the answer, but committed to getting better, delivering better solutions uh, to uh, participants and plan sponsors uh, over time. Well, Drew, Mike, this has been an excellent opportunity to sit down and learn more uh, about this partnership. Uh, and I hope our, our listeners also were able to learn more, not just about the partnership, but this important discussion, this important topic, and a lot uh, more uh, to come on it, I'm sure. So, Mike, Drew, again, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and to our audience, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on another episode of the Wave Strength Podcast. I want to encourage you to head over to YouTube, Spotify, and Audible. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe to stay current with new content. Thanks so much and have a great day, everyone. This has been another episode of the Wave Strength presented by Pacific Life. Don't forget to catch us on YouTube and make sure to subscribe. Although this podcast is presented by Pacific Life, the opinions and views expressed are those of the hosts and participants and do not necessarily reflect Pacific Life's views on any of the topics discussed. Pacific Life is a product provider. It is not a fiduciary and therefore does not give advice or make recommendations regarding insurance or investment products. Pacific Life, its affiliates, its distributors, and respective representatives do not provide any employer-sponsored qualified plan administrative services or impartial advice about investments and do not act in a fiduciary capacity for any plan. Pacific Life refers to Pacific Life Insurance Company and its affiliates, including Pacific Life and Annuity Company. Insurance products can be issued in all states except New York by Pacific Life Insurance Company or Pacific Life and Annuity Company. In New York, insurance products are only issued by Pacific Life and Annuity Company. Product availability and features may vary by state. Each insurance company is solely responsible for the financial obligations accruing under the products it issues. Guest speakers are solely responsible for the content of their presentations and do not necessarily represent the opinions of Pacific Life and its affiliates. The views expressed in this presentation are those of the authors and presenters. They are subject to change at any time. All guarantees are subject to the claims paying ability and financial strength of the issuing insurance company. This presentation discusses products which have not been fully developed or filed for approval. Features and product names are subject to regulatory approval. Contract will be issued by Pacific Life Insurance Company, PLIC, which is not authorized in New York and cannot cover any participant that lives in New York. Subject to further internal review and regulatory approval, any New York participants would be covered by a contract issued by Pacific Life and Annuity Company. In this video, reference to a partnership between Pacific Life and Franklin Templeton refers to a collaborative project between the two companies. Nothing said shall be deemed or construed to create a partnership, joint venture, or agency relationship between the parties. Neither party has the authority to bind the other party or to make commitments on such party's behalf. Franklin Templeton and Pacific Life have jointly developed a solution that will include one or more group annuity contracts issued by Pacific Life to collective investment trusts for the funding of an in-plan accumulation solution. And through Franklin Templeton's Goals Optimization Engine will allow defined contribution plan participants to purchase, over time, units of a lifetime income benefit. During the accumulation phase, funds can be withdrawn from the solution and annuity contracts. Once allocations are converted into income via annuitization, you will not be allowed to withdraw or liquidate value from the amount annuitized. This information has been provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice or a recommendation. The product discussed is proposed and subject to change. All investments involve risk. 
there is no assurance that the employment of this strategy will result in future targets being met. Prospective investors should consult a financial professional in order to determine whether an investment product is appropriate for their particular circumstances. Franklin Templeton and Pacific Life are unaffiliated companies. This podcast was recorded on October 17th, 2022. Thanks for joining us on today's show. We'd love to hear from you. Join the conversation below and leave a comment on your thoughts on what the industry can do better for participants as it pertains to lifetime income solutions. And if you'd like more interesting content, click one of these links over here.